This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. The Panthers fired Ron Rivera. Early edition podcast. Yeah, this is uh, breaking mm-hmm. news as of a couple hours ago, I guess. Um, yeah. David Tepper has announced that Ron Rivera, no longer the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. He did not accept mediocrity. He said he wouldn't, and he proved it today. This is what happens when you lose to the Redskins. <laughs> And it should be. I mean, they've already fired their head coach for how bad they've played. Exactly, yep. So, what were your initial thoughts when you heard the news? And by the way, Jerry and I reported the news to each other at the exact same time, pretty much. <laughs> nanoseconds apart. So, but I was what, first. I was you first. Were te- technically, you were first. Uh, um, so, yeah, what did you, you think when you heard? Well, if you remember back to Monday, I said we need to come up with a topic for this podcast you know, before the game preview. And I said, well, you know, we need to come up with a topic unless Ron Rivera gets fired and then it writes itself. And lo and behold, it can't happen to Some, come some to fruition. Yeah. So Sometimes the show writes itself. <laughs> so yeah, it I mean, was kind of expected. I'll put right. it that way. And we did talk about it on uh, Monday's show. We, you know, basically said we were done. Uh, the title of the show is Fire Everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't get that. We only got one. We didn't get that. We got Ron Rivera fired. They weren't going to fire the entire coaching staff. (laughs) (laughs) And Um, let the players coach like I suggested. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Uh, But they, so they did hire, uh, fire Ron. Uh, Initially, my thoughts were, um, a little sad at first because, you know, it is the end of an era, right? This is, this is what we've known since 2011, um, and, I mean, Ron Rivera was the coach of the Panthers before I was married, before I had a kid. Um, I mean, this is all that we've known for a long time, and now he's gone. Um, it, it does feel like the end of something. And it he is took us, the end of the something. It is, it is. I mean, the, he took us to a Super Bowl. We won more games than we lost with him as head coach. But, as of lately, he is just not... It's just not been working, right? No, and I agree. First of all, I'm not trying to badmouth Ron here. Ron has been a great head coach for the Panthers, the best head coach, in my opinion, that they've ever had. Oh, no doubt. No I, doubt. But after a while, head coaching, it starts to run its course. Even great head coaches. Bill Belichick is the anomaly where he can stay and still stay relevant. Their head coaching speeches just start to wear down on the same players over and over again. And sometimes, you know, they need a breath a breath of fresh air as well just to, you know, reinvigorate them. And that may have been happening because this team, I mean, every player has spoke glowingly of him since this has come out. But basically, 7-9 and nine last year, 5-7 and seven so far, he's just... It's unacceptable. You know, this roster is too good to be this bad. Yeah, since the Super Bowl season, the Panthers have gone six and ten, eleven and five, seven and nine, and now nine and or five and seven. Overall, twenty nine and thirty one. That's just not good enough. Um, and Tepper, you know, a new owner coming in, the writing was on the the wall. I mean, oh he yeah, basically said that his first year you know he wanted to just work on the football side of things i'm sorry the uh, business side of things he got that taken care of now he's going to put his his stamp on the other side you know the football side the side that everybody sees Mm -hmm. and it's it was time it was time i I think it was time and ron had his chance everybody knew this was make the playoffs or not and now we're and i think we're officially eliminated from playoff hopes now so 
And once that happened, he he got the axe. I think there's a, the slightest of chances, but it all but officially eliminated. Yeah. Um, so Perry Fuel takes over as head coach, interim head mm-hmm. coach. That's a little surprising. It is. Um, he's been interim head coach before for the New York Giants. Uh, I think he went three and four, if I remember correctly. I did the research earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, he actually interviewed for this job when Ron Rivera did. Yep. So He did. A um, little surprising considering we have um, Norv Turner on the roster, mm-hmm. who has been a head coach several times before. Uh, he has been moved from offensive coordinator to special assistant to the head coach. Mm-hmm. And Scott Turner, his son, has moved from quarterback's coach to offensive coordinator. Yeah. So lots of shakeup on this coaching staff I for, think, the, for the remainder of the season. I think what they wanted to do is to give – I know Perry Fell, Fell isn't fuel. a young – yeah, I'm like, going to like, mispronounce Like fuel. Think of fuel like you put in your car. Okay, yeah. Perry Fuel. Uh, he's not a younger guy, but I think they wanted to give him a chance to maybe show what he has. And same with Scott Turner. I Norv, Norv's not the future. Everybody knows that. Norv knows that. And he took this job to get his son Scott more of a foot in the door as the heir apparent to him for when he retired. And I think that's what they're doing here. They're just letting the younger coaches kind of take the reins, see what they can do. Yeah, and I don't know if any of you have had a chance to see, but on Panthers.com there is an interview that Bill Voth had with Tepper where basically he kind of talks about his thinking process uh, with all these changes, and he basically said that exactly. It was Perry Fuel. You know, he's he deserves a shot. This is kind of he's going to get a nice uh, sample size here from him, and he will be, you know, potentially in consideration for the permanent head coaching position if – things go well the next four weeks, I would assume. Most um, interim coaches get an interview. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, Perry Fuel has been in consideration for head, jo- head coaching jobs before, so mm-hmm. it's not crazy to think he's uh, he's got a lot of experience as a coach. So we'll see. Um, Scott Turner is, this is the first time he's ever had a coordinator job, for sure. Mm-hmm. But Tepper, I likes the young fresh idea kind of guy. And that's definitely what Scott Turner at least seems to be. And from what the interview said, that's what he's hoping to get from Scott Turner is some new ideas, some fresh perspective on the play calling. Um, So I think it's going to be really interesting to see what the Panthers look like these next four weeks. It's either going to be a train wreck or it's going to be surprisingly proficient, but it's going to be fun to watch either way. Oh, it's definitely going to be fun to watch. I, I'm really hoping Scott opens up the playbook, especially with us out of contention. Let's just try to go crazy. I kind of want us to lose just so we can get a top 10 pick. But during the game, there's no way I'm going to be rooting against the Panthers. So, of course. Of course. And, and I'll be upset when they lose, even though I know <laughs> mentally I, they should lose. Just like last week it when Washington happened. I was so upset after the loss, but realistically... It probably helped our draft potential. Potentially. I mean, right now I think we're sitting right around 11th, 12th, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the thing is, you know, kind of moving forward here. And we won't talk too much about potential head coaches. Mm-hmm. But what a potential head coach looks for is, do you have a quarterback? And... Who's your GM? Yep. So right now we don't really know about our quarterback. If we had a top five draft pick, that might change something. We do have a GM. Yeah. (laughs) And we're hiring an assistant for him. So I'm kind of curious if he's going to stay long term. Yeah, it sounds like he's at least staying through this next season. Uh, I hope not. Does, um, does Marty Herney have like the best private eye ever to get <laughs> dirt on the owners? Come on. So Tepper that say, said, say Gettleman was you, worse. <laughs> you you heard what Tepper said, right? He basically said that Marty Herney is one of the most brilliant minds when it comes to scouting college talent. 
and he did not want to lose that. And I, I actually agree with that because if you can say one thing about Marty Herney, it's that his drafts are very good. Yeah. And they always have been. Uh, yeah, he he does know how to draft, except for in the second round. <laughs> Except for the second round. His drafts have been very good. I mean, he nails his first round. He does. He I look at Brian round. Burns. I mean. So what I took from that interview, and, and he mentioned that, and then he also talked about the business side. And he said, you know, we hired a vice president. We hired a COO. We hired a president. He said, he, he's sort of thinking like the COO runs the day-to-day. The president oversees the big picture. And... To me, it sounded like he was saying maybe Marty Herney is going to retain the GM title, but this assistant to the GM is going to be the COO. So maybe this guy is more in charge of the finances, this cap, right? Like signing these these you know day to day players, whereas Herney is going to be focused on the draft, you know, the big picture stuff, the scouting, working with the right. scouts. And and I, or maybe maybe Herney even moves to maybe there's a new type of job for him, some sort of, you know, football operations president or something like that, you know, and then we get a GM. You were reading my mind. I was going to say president of football operations. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so maybe that maybe that's where this goes. But um, I, I actually do agree that Herney should stay involved in some capacity when it comes to the draft, because He's proven over and over again that he does have a good mind for the draft. And, and this roster is a very good roster. He put so, together a good team this year. Uh, besides his ability to get a, well, a, I was about to say ba- good backup, but Kyle Allen has proved he's a decent backup. The problem is he's just not a good starter. Starter, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. It seemed like they hit on a pretty good backup, but, uh, you know, it's hard to have two starting quarterbacks on your roster, you know. Yeah. So. Um, <sighs> well, I did want to bring up a co- I know we're going more into everything else, but talking about Ron Rivera, uh, he was coach of the year for 2013 and 2015. He does have a winning record for as a head coach. I predict he's going to find a, another head coaching job very soon in the offseason. I agree. I've seen San Diego floated out there. Um, I don't think he'd go to Dallas. I do no. think the Giants are a possibility if they decide to cut bait quickly, especially if Gettleman stays there. Yeah, I think Anthony Lynn, if he gets fired, I think that's a prime place. You you may have to wor- worry about getting a new QB there, yeah. but everything else on that roster is pretty nice. I think I said San Diego. I meant uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> Everybody okay. knows what I meant. Everybody knows what I meant. Everybody still refers to him on San Diego. You know how many times I've watched a game with him and the commentators, like professional broadcasters, are still calling him San Diego. Yeah. The worst move ever. Right. That's because they should be San Diego. It, it, it fit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that Ron will probably get a job next season if he wants one. Now, I've heard some rumors out there saying that maybe he takes a year off just to reset, and yeah. I could definitely see that. But maybe since he's getting fired, you know, with four games left in the season, he'll have a little bit of time to kind of reflect. And, mm-hmm. you know, if they, these teams come knocking on his door, he'll probably take a job. That, that that Charger job is a really good job if some if they come knocking. I agree, yep. Um, Vegas did put out a list of... I guess who's currently the leader in it's too soon. It's too soon, but there is a list. And uh, I want to do a podcast where we came up with ideas and people. And if you have any suggestions, you can email them to meow mix podcast or meow mix mailbag at gmail.com. So according to betonline.ag, Jim Harbaugh leads the potential head coaching list. I, I like Jason, Jim Harbaugh. Jason Garrett and Josh McDaniels and Dan Quinn are the next three. See, it's way too early for the for. I think that's time. crazy. I think that's crazy. If can we all agree if Jason Garrett magically comes here, can we all go pick it out in front of Bank of America Stadium? 
and yell at David Tepper because I want Ron Rivera <clears throat> nine times more than Jason Garrett. I can't see. I can't see Jason Garrett. I can't see Tepper hiring Jason Garrett. I mean, that, I the epitome of mediocrity right there. Exactly. Um, there's another list that just came out from Sportsline with Greg Roman as the leader in the clubhouse. Mike McCarthy. Oh, former, not Mike McCarthy. Former uh, Packers coach second on that list. After that horrible review of him and Brett Favre and how the last few years he basically just w- walked in and was like, no, I'm going up to my office. I'm sleeping in my office and ign- missing meetings. <laughs> yeah, no, he does not t- need to be on our head coaching list. Greg Roman, I think, is shows a lot of potential. Well, especially if we end up getting Cam back at, mm-hmm. at that level, Greg Roman would actually be a very easy fit. Um, we'll see. I mean, moving from coordinator to head coach is always not always doesn't always work out as yeah. we've seen. So. I've al- I've also heard uh, obviously Lincoln Riley, who's the jewel, but a lot of people already have Lincoln Riley going to Dallas since he's yeah, from he's, Texas. And... He's not even on in either of these lists. Yeah. Another one I heard is Baylor's head coach, which is a very interesting air raid type of offense that has potential. Yeah, I always worry about those guys. I, I do too. But Cliff, Cliff that Barry's those... looking decent in Arizona. I mean, I guess. I mean, what are they like three, eight, and one? Like, yeah, but this is their <laughs> first season. Decent. You got, well, where were they last year with Wilkes? Well, you know, I don't know. Probably not much better. <laughs> um, Bill Cower has been on both of these lists, by the way. No. The Pittsburgh Connection. I know. The Pittsburgh Connection. He was rumored. He used to live here. I don't know if he still does. It, it's five to ten years too late for Bill Cower to make a comeback, in my opinion. And I also think David Tepper is going to go... A younger guy, I'm hoping he goes offense, but I'm not sure. A younger guy who looks at analytics, and I don't necessarily think Bill Cowher is that guy. So that's another thing that came up during that Tepper interview was <clears throat> both asked him what he's going to be looking for in a new head coach, and he said he wanted a mix of old school and new school. So And, and I agree 100%. The, yeah, he wants the old school in terms of you know hard-nosed football, discipline, the Pittsburgh Steelers way essentially, but then he also wants the new school with statistics and analytics and, you know, a different way of thinking about football. So it's going to be really interesting to see who he finds that is the perfect mix of those two. Mm-hmm. So we'll it, see. It, and it may not be just one strictly head coach that does it. They may bring in an analytics specialist to help guide the stats part for the head coach, but the head coach is open to understanding and tweaking his game plan to work with the analytics. Yeah. Here's something interesting. Uh, I was kind of looking at Ron Rivera's coaching uh, stats, I guess, with the Mm -hmm. Panthers, and I was looking at challenges. And this is totally random, but I was looking at the the number of challenges that he, uh, I guess, challenged and won during his mm-hmm. tenure here. In 2015, he challenged 17 times in the season, and he won 10 of them. That he sounds really good. He didn't challenge, he didn't throw the challenge flag more than seven times any other season. Hmm. So that one season, he just went crazy with the challenges, and we went 15-1. and one. His other two highest were... Uh, 2013, he challenged seven times. We went 12 and four. And 2014, he challenged seven times. We went seven, eight, and one, but we won the division. So his three highest challenge years were our back to back to back NFC championship teams. Hmm. Kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know if that means anything, but it's interesting. Yeah, I don't know if there's a correlation there, but it is very interesting. Overall, he won 28 challenges out of 58 possible. In his tenure, he was three and four in the playoffs, so a losing record in the playoffs. Um, but he did take us to that one Super Bowl. So I don't know if we have anything else to say about Ron other than 
you know, thank you, yeah, I guess. basic. Yeah, yeah, basic. But thank you. Yeah, you're going one <laughs> way. I'm going the other way. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for, um, you know, taking us to a Super Bowl, having some winning seasons here. Um, unfortunately, he only had three winning seasons out of his, what, nine that he was here. Yeah. Which that's just no, not going to do it. No, it, he's been the best Panthers head coach of all time. He's He's been a model citizen and person here in Charlotte. Really does a lot of great things for a community. But unfortunately, his to- tenure as head coach came to an end, and it, it, it needed to. It did. Uh, very well respected around the NFL, and he will, as we've mentioned, get a job very quickly, I would yeah. I would assume. I'm so. assuming head coach, too. I'm not even expecting him to drop <clears throat> down to defensive. Oh, no. He'll be a head coach. All right. Um, do you want to... Uh... <laughs> So before the news came out, we did have some power rankings. If you real quick, do you want to see where the Panthers were, or do you want to say where do you think the Panthers fell? Where were we? Sixteen. We were seventeen. Or, no, I'm sorry, we were eighteen last week. Eighteen. We dropped down to twenty-three. No, only dropped down to twenty, uh-huh. um, <clears throat> which is surprising. But uh, this is the lowest we've been since week four of the season. So well, I mean that doesn't surprise me. Uh, it doesn't. All right. <sighs> well, I guess we will take a short break and come back with the game preview. Hey there. Are you a college football fan? Well, I'm Andre Cherry, and on my show, The Cherry Picking Podcast, I dive deep into the world of college football during each week of the season. For the past nine seasons, fans have come to my site, cherrypickingsports.com, to hear my college football analysis and game-winning predictions for each week of the season. The Cherry Picking Podcast is presented by the Big Heads Media Podcast Network and can also be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Make sure you click the subscribe button today. And we're back back and now we're going to spend a little time previewing the carolina panthers at atlanta falcons uh atlanta is favored by three this game and after week 11's debacle i am not surprised where carolina lost 29 to 3 uh that was an ugly game uh we currently don't have any injuries as we're doing an early broadcast to bring the ron rivera news uh, my expectations is Greg Olson will definitely be out. Uh, I think everybody else will that normally plays will play. Hopefully, Dennis Daly will be out there this week as well. Yeah, not sure about the injuries. Um, by the way, we didn't miss talking about Greg Olson during our last show, and he obviously did get a concussion. He's in concussion protocol. Not sure if we've seen the last of Greg Olson as a Carolina Panther, but it's possible. Yeah, and that was actually one of our topic before the yeah. firing too, about where he sits if he if we expect him back at all ever yeah. with his great commentating. I expect him to have the Monday night job next year because Booger yeah. is horrible. I think if he doesn't come back and play this year, he's done. Uh, m- maybe I mean nobody wants their career to end on an injury, but. Um, I just have a feeling this is going to be his last year anyway. So, mm-hmm. uh, but anyway, it, back to the Falcons. Um, you know, this was the Kyle Allen has imploded game, right? I mean, yeah, one the, one of this one and San Fran were the implosion games. Four interceptions for Kyle Allen, no touchdowns. Um, he did throw for three hundred twenty-five yards, but it took him fifty passes to get there. Uh, another criminally underutilized Christian McCaffrey game, only 14 carries, although he did also have 11 receptions in this game. Actually, I believe a career high in uh, receiving yards uh, at that point. I think he might have, uh, I don't know if he's surpassed that or not since then, but 11 receptions, 129 yards for McCaffrey in that game. I don't know. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I honestly don't know what to expect in this game with the new coaching staff. And, I mean, we're playing in Atlanta. It's always a tough place to go in a division. This is a, a team we should beat. Uh, again, but <laughs> last time we looked awful. And some reason, offensively, we wanted to pass the ball. Even before the Christian Mc- or we got down big, we were constantly throwing the ball. 
I don't know what Norv saw that he constantly wanted Kyle Allen to throw last week and week 11 against Atlanta. I'm hoping he they change it up, give Christian McCaffrey the touches rushing the ball to break a few loose. Well, maybe that's why Norv's no longer the offensive coordinator. Maybe. I, I Hopefully Scott understands that running the ball wins you the game, especially when your quarterback is suspect and you have one of the top three running backs in the league, and in my opinion, the best running back in the league. You got to feed him. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he's kind of lost some of the MVP talk uh, since the Panthers started losing particularly with him not being able to convert on these short yardage Mm -hmm. game-on-the-line situations. I think that has taken a little bit of the shine off of McCaffrey's season. But he's still having a hell of a season and still should be, on this team in particular, the featured piece. We got to stop Calvin Ridley somehow. Mm -hmm. The guy tears us up, it seems like, every time we play him. Um, Yeah. I don't I, know. It'll be interesting to see how the defense responds. I mean, Terry, Perry Fuel is a defensive coach as well. I don't, but he was, uh, was he our secondary coach? Yeah, he was our secondary yeah. coach. He's been a secondary coach all over the league. Uh, we got him from Jacksonville when Jalen Ramsey had those record years. Right. So the secondary hasn't been amazing the last few weeks. Um, so I'm not sure if that's going to be improved with Perry being the head coach. But um, I don't know, man. Um, I don't either. I, I don't even at, know how to. I don't even know how to preview this game. To be I honest. don't either. Uh, and Atlanta played us in New Orleans really good in Week Ten and Week Eleven. Like they looked like they expected to in the beginning of the season that they were a wild card team, a possible NFC South, you know, champion. Mm-hmm. What people were expecting from them. But then, then the wheels fell back off. I don't yeah, they understand got it. Smoked by the Bucks. They got destroyed, or not destroyed, beat up by the Bucks, and then they got beat up again by the same Saints a week later. So, have they given up? And they just wanted to give uh, their coach one last hurrah before he got shipped off. I don't know. I, I, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, those two games against the Panthers and the Saints, they won. 26 to 9 and 29 to 3. I mean, they were just dominant on both sides of the ball. So uh, that could be what we see again. Um, this is their third home game in a row. Now, they those two games they won, by the way, and the Saints and the Panthers were both road games. And then they've lost these next two games, which are both home games. Mm-hmm. So maybe they just suck at home. I don't know. Hey, so uh, do the Panthers lately. Yeah. Uh, they've only won once at home this year. So. This game could go either way. I would not bet this game if I were a betting man um, in any way. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Uh, The only positive out of this game is we did hold them to only 54 rushing yards. Right. By far our best performance of the season. (laughs) And after coming off of our worst performance of the season, rushing-wise, you know, a welcome sign, I guess, against a team that just doesn't run the ball very well. So, yeah. <laughs> um, what do you expect? I mean, I, I I expect the Panthers to win this game. Actually, I think a lot of times, a lot of times, <laughs> coming off a coaching change, especially a team that's sort of been underperforming, they come out and they play on fire. You know, the next game or two. So, I think the Panthers are going to win this game. I don't know how they're going to look. I don't know if it's going to be a high-scoring game. I don't know if it's going to be a defensive game. I just have no idea because I don't know what this version of the Panthers is going to be. But I'm predicting the Panthers win a close one, maybe 30-27, something like that. Uh, See, I was thinking the same way. I personally, at this point, I want us to lose out. Uh, I believe I looked at last year's um, draft order and the five— the team with five five and eleven records picked, I think, five to seven or four to seven. Well, if the six and sevens, they obviously were up there. And if, just like last year, we were seven and nine, and we picked fourteen. Yeah, that's a ex- big difference. I don't know that we'll lose out, but if we lose this game, I mean, we've got the Colts, Seattle, and 
New Orleans one more time left, those are all very tough games. So, you know, it's quite possible we end up 5-11 and 11 or 6-10. and 10. Yeah, um, back to my prediction. Sorry, I, I lost oh, no track. Problem. Uh, <laughs> I think Carolina wins 24-20. I just, okay. I think they, you know, score. I think somehow we win this game. Like I said, like you said, I think maybe the raw raw of a new coaching kind of win one for Ron. So, do you have any bold predictions for this game? Bold predictions. Um, I think McCaffrey just gets fed to death in this game. I think he gets thirty carries, thirty carries in this game. Okay, I'm gonna go opposite. I think DJ Moore has fifteen receptions. Wow. Okay. Um, I do think that we see Will Greer in this game. I do not. Do you want to make it? Beer bit of the week. Let's do it. Yeah, I think uh, whether it's in a blowout or because Kyle Allen starts off throwing a couple interceptions, I just can see the leash being very short on him this week, especially with sort of nothing to play for and everything to play for, sort of. Um, I could see, hey, why not at this point, right? I agree with you. I I was calling for Will Greer in this game last last time that yeah. Will Greer needs to start. It's time we see what happens, but I don't think it happens. I think Kyle Allen has another actually good game. Yeah. Yeah, he, it could he be. Does it. He does that. He has a really good game where you're like, wow, this kid has a lot of potential. Then you see another game like the Atlanta <laughs> game, and you're like, get that kid out of there. Yeah. I just wonder if Atlanta's got him figured out. So uh, it's going to take a lot of film review and sort of preparation on his part to change what happened the last time they played. I just don't know if he's got it in him. I don't know if he's, uh, he's still too raw maybe to – yeah to make those adjustments. But uh, yeah, uh, I think the Panthers win. I think we see Will Greer and I think uh, that's probably the last game we lose all, or win all year. I I agree with that one too. I think I'm predicting losses the rest of the season, but I think that's it for our early edition gate episode here. Do you yeah. have anything else? No, other than, um, I'm very, very interested to see what the Panthers look like Sunday. I am too. Uh, we want to thank everybody for listening. As always, thank you. Uh, if you have any head coaching ideas or suggestions, send them in to meowmixmailbag at gmail.com. Any suggestions of Bill Belichick or someone that's not realistic will not be read on the air. Now, I would say that we also have a poll up on our Twitter um, about – you know who the head coach of the next Panthers or who the next head coach of the Panthers is? Is it going to be a college head coach, a former NFL head coach, or a current NFL coordinator? So go to that you know throw a vote up. And um, right now, it looks like current NFL coordinators leading the way, but you know, still got about a day left on that poll. Yeah, and you can follow us on Twitter at Meow Mix Podcast. All right. Well, we will be back after the game on Sunday. We'll probably get the podcast out on monday but until then everybody keep pounding not you rivera you don't get to pound anymore